What you are listening to is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in the squared circle. Both parties have agreed to dismiss their cases and have their disputes settled here in our forum, The Turnbuckle Debate. everyone welcome back to the turn buckle debate my name is sneed i'm chad i'm tom the og fig kid the staple of the turn buckle debate and our guest joining us for third fourth time fourth or fourth, fourth i think yeah fourth I, I'm between myself yeah i can't tell i think maybe the third maybe the fourth but tom you've been the staple since my first visit definitely though so that's impressive <laughs> to hold that title that long <laughs> that's awesome. we have jonah from rewind recap relive always fun to have you on man what's been going on how you been i've been pretty good thank you for having me back for whatever time it is it's always fun to come on here with you guys uh just been trudging along in the podcast world you know same story uh different month not different year this time i think the first time it was like a year in between my visits uh, i think yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where we're shortening the gap which is nice but yeah just doing doing collabs when i can i think i have another one with uh counted out coming up so that's always fun mike and tyler of those guys I, yeah no awesome awesome guys always put in a lot of work definitely should check them out but on my channel rewind recap relive also been just had my most recent interview with james ellsworth and a great rising star stephen meeks and that was a really cool uh back and forth there a lot of great advice as well as my other project i work on with james who used to have that 90 wrestling podcast which is now cafe day renee and uh, just a lot of meeting a lot of new people in the community and it's growing every day you guys see it. Um, and also congratulations on all your success. We talked a little bit before we went on, but awesome to see you guys growing as fast as you are. I love to see all the progress. Thanks, dude. We appreciate it. And I, I, I love all the clips you've been throwing up. Like the Kurt Angle interview you had was awesome. If you guys aren't That's checking fun. out Rewind, Recap, Relive, go follow it on Instagram. I believe it's just Rewind, Recap, Relive on IG, right? That's what it is. I mean, I would like to also just that, but a lot of people say it's a long name. I think you guys got it down packed now. I've had it down for a little bit. The wrestlers, it takes a little bit to catch on. But yeah, rewind, recap, relive, or Twitter, R3Jonah. All the links are there. Kurt Angle was great, Chad. Thank you for that. That was an awesome interview. That was a big milestone for me as a podcaster to get Kurt on the show. That was a lot of a lot of hard work. I think last time we spoke, I just interviewed RVD. So RVD, yeah. Kurt Angle, if I could get... If I could get a Hall of Famer every time right before we speak, I think that would <laughs> my cringe yeah. just a little bit. <laughs> exactly. I love your name, man. I think it flows really well. I love the rewind, recap, relive. It just, I, it just yeah, flows. Don't so, change it. Don't shorten it. Yeah. It, no, no, I'm, yeah. I love, if, no, honestly, if I ever listened to the criticism, I would have done it a long time ago. No. Uh, do you guys remember, real fast before we get into it, do you remember, could you pinpoint what it's a parody of? What wrestling to, it, it's a parody of? Not off it the ties top in of with one of our topics today. I'll say that. It ties in with one of the people involving one of our topics today. Re rebuild. Uh, yes. I can't remember the, the – it's redesign, the – Redesign. Redesign, rebuild, rebuild reclaim. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. <laughs> I that, love he it. must have been using that around the time. Around the time I started my show, he must – was like, that's so cool. That'll stay forever. And it was gone within a month. <laughs> and now I just have this name that people are like, he must have just thought of that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Appreciate well, that's it. awesome, man. It's good to hear that you've been having a lot of success. We're glad to have you back on. If you guys are ready, we have three new topics to get into. Um, I'm ready to go if you guys are. Let's do it. Yes. All right. Oh. All right. Here we go. First topic of the evening. Should companies change title designs? Now, we just saw uh, Roman got a new title design um, on his 1,000th day. Um, he was presented with a new redesigned title. Do you guys think that companies should change title designs? And if you have a shitty title, then yes. If you're AEW, no. But if you're half of these WWE titles, they are Garbage. Why did you, you had Cody bring back the, the classic intercontinental intercontinental title? 
And then they get rid of it again and bring back this just – it just looks like a, a piece of junk. I, I can't stand the WWE titles right now. They don't have – I guess their world title is the best-looking title they have, but that's not really saying much. Like, I'm not a fan of any of their titles right now. I love the 90s titles. I love the old tag team championships. I love the winged eagle. But, like, WWE, not nah, Like, get some real designs. AEW's got their titles down right. I wouldn't change a thing if I was AEW. But, yeah, if you have shitty titles, you should change them. If they're working and people love them, no, I don't think I don't think you should change them. I'm I'm really torn on this because I don't I don't want to take a hard line in the sand on <laughs> yes you should or no you shouldn't. I, I'm kind of with you, Tom. Like you should have the ability to update them if if need be, but at the same time, there's something about keeping a title the same for a long time that adds tradition, legacy history um that's why i love even though it's a small promotion and it's not got a lot of eyes on it like you know the big companies but nwa uses the 10 pounds of gold that belt has been the same since dusty held it flair held it harley race held it and when someone has that title it it pulls me in because i'm like damn that's the same belt it adds so much historical significance and power to that title like imagine if Roman Reigns was holding the winged eagle or even just like a, an increased size of the winged eagles that way, when you're, you're going through the history books or you're pulling up the network on Peacock and watching old matches and you see Hogan or Bret Hart or the iron Sheik or any of these guys holding up a title. If that was the same title that Roman Reigns is holding up at mania, you would be like, it's just this through line. It's this connection to history. And I long for stuff like that. But at the same time, I mean, if, if they uh, updated the WWE tag team titles yesterday, it wouldn't have been soon enough because I hate those titles. So I don't want to take a hard line in the sand either way, but I think they should have – they should have the ability to update, but you should be very precious on what you update. Uh, you don't want to erase history completely. I mean, I don't mind what AEW did with MJF, just changing the strap to the title. I think that no, stra straps are different. Straps are different. And it adds to him like it's him. So it's perfect. But yeah, I, if, if there's little things you could do to pay homage to yes, but you have like the well, even, even the women's, even the AEW women's title, when they first introduced it, it was very tiny and they, they increased it in size and then they changed the overall design of it. And I didn't have a problem with that because one, it's a young company. There's not a lot of history tied to these titles yet <laughs> anyway. And I thought it was an improvement upon what was there before. Yeah. But once you start moving backwards, I think. Uh, yeah. I'll. Uh, yeah. You want to jump in? Sure. I'll. I'll. Uh, and I'll, I'll take the hard line in the sand. I don't. <laughs> I will. Don't. Don't fucking change title designs. I absolutely hate it. I can't think of one title design that I that is out there now that the original I don't like better. That's true. That's good. Point. There's not there's not one. And the 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 lineage that goes with it, man, it's so you know, you mentioned it. Ro if Roman held the if if Roman's holding the the winged eagle, the same one that Hulk Hogan fought for with ultimate warrior and the same intercontinental belt that they had in the title for title match. Like, I don't know. It holds so much more prestige to me, man. And AEW is a, you know, that is a good example because they did change. And I did like that. They changed the women's title because it did look better, but I think that was just working out kinks of a new company. Yeah. And I think WWE, we're going to not to be like, prejudice towards wwe but they have that's we've always talked about it the one thing wwe has over every company in pro wrestling is their history yeah and i feel like sometimes they try to modernize and innovate and i'm all for that but sometimes they do it at the expense of the history of the company and i get yeah. it like the, new, the 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 heavyweight title has the w on it it has the logo on it like you want that out there because those are going to be the things that the champions are holding of, you know, Super Bowl champions when right. they get a bell. Like, right, right. It's visible scene. It's per, it's marketing. It's promoting. It's but fuck that. Have something else that you give <laughs> yeah. them other than a title belt. They don't deserve. They don't need a title belt. A title belt is what your champion holds, and that's the only person that has it. Yeah. 
Yeah. All really good points. Yeah, and I'll I'll jump in. I think that like Chad, you brought up a great point. Like they do it at the expense of their history. A small part of that that bothers me, and I won't go off on the tangent too much, but a very similar thing is like themes these days, them updating themes so much. It 100%. completely diminishes. Like I love Seth Rollins' theme now, and it's fine that the, the crowd is so behind and it really is a part of his character. Now we saw his WrestleMania entrance. It's huge. However, it's like his 15th theme song, it feels like. And, you know, you look at guys like Randy Orton, who his theme song is so synonymous to, and he's only had two, and both of them are so oh, bangers. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't, I hate that part. And that ties into the title for me too. Like I agree seeing Reigns hold the winged Eagle up would be amazing. And yeah, you know, the logo part, I get it, especially with Nick Khan now, like what we saw at WrestleMania with like the barricades being ads and everything being ad friendly and marketing being driven so heavy for this company. I think there's no chance we get a title without that logo plastered there. Uh, and they also, I think, are going into more of like a sleek, we're talking about more like aesthetically. I feel like all these titles are a lot sleeker and easier to look at and define like, oh, that's a WWE championship rather than like the Winged Eagle having a lot of stuff on it or any of these titles having a lot with like the big gold was really cool to us fans. But if you weren't a fan of wrestling, you might look at that and say, you know, what is it? It's just a hunk of gold, you know. On right, a right. So, but all that being said, uh, the title they just unveiled, which I guess, and that's another thing that's so confusing to me that diminish that makes things not matter is like the universal title hated the design from the get go, hated the idea of the title. But anyway, what was its lifespan? Three years. Like that's so depressing. <laughs> uh, you look at some of the other belts, the intercontinental championship 50 years or something, right. Or if not mm -hmm. more. So yeah, three years is depressing, but talking about more of the design, the one they just unveiled, I don't know if you guys saw the video, um, the five hidden gems of the new WWE championship, but there's like five callbacks on it. I think over the main plate are like ring ropes, um, like gold plated ring ropes for the squared circle. I think there's like three lions on it. That's like the McMahon crest. There's winged eagles in there to, to call back to the winged eagle championship and, and a couple other things. And I like that. I just like creativity. I mean, we're talking about design. This whole topic is about designing a title. Just add some creativity to it. I feel because I'll agree with Tom AEW better belts like the AEW world championship looks beautiful to me uh the wwe one they just gave reigns it's better it doesn't look as goofy but i think we can get better i really think we could get more creative with like even the plate you know like yeah and i'll, I'll end it quickly with this have you guys ever put like you ever create a belt in one of the video games i mean the belts you can make in the games are insane <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they never seem to make it to the big screen it's always the same uh, the Intercontinental Championship and U.S. title are kind of cool. I'll admit, like, those, I like them better. But the white strap will always be my favorite for the IC title. That that was – it's just Same. It's a pretty thing for them to have. Like, I don't know. That's why – so I don't know if I draw the line in the sand either of, like, yes or no. But if you're going to do it, be creative. I – one – I'm going to push back on one thing you say, and I think it's just propping up what – how how I was talking about – you know, history being, they sacrifice their history sometimes for innovation, like evolving. And, and I'm yeah. all for evolving the company. I think the proof is in the pudding. They're the biggest they've ever been. They're making more money than they ever have. They're super, super hot right now with the fan base. But I think the reason a, a winged eagle or a big gold belt doesn't, wouldn't be known is because you're changing the titles all the time. Like if that was your belt and you stuck with that belt for the last 40 years of that company and, and WWE was still as big as they are right now, people would know what that belt is. Like, Oh, that's the W that's I do. I do yeah. get though. I do totally get having the logo on there. I mean, AEW's world title has AEW big and bold. I have no problem with that. They can have that W on the title. Even if they brought back the winged Eagle, or any of their, even the Intercontinental, the old school Intercontinental, I wouldn't be opposed to them just bringing that back with the design, but working the new logo in. That would be a fine compromise for me. But the fact that it's like we have to scrap the entire design, like I hate the Intercontinental title, <laughs> the, what, what they did to it. it. It was my favorite title of all time. When Cody brought the old school one back, yeah. I was so pumped. And then when they did this one, it Everything well, it's looks confusing looking. Yeah, right? it's and like jumbled yeah. together. Yeah. 
and and it's, their titles the like, w, but it's not yeah i guess my biggest problem with their titles is they look like toys to me they look yeah. like <clears throat> They don't, I mean, I don't know. An AEW title is similar to like a UFC title in the, or, a, or a, a boxing title where it looks like a heavyweight championship belt. Like there's some sort of like prize fighting prestige to the belts where WWE, it looks like a very easily replicated um, something you'd see in Target. You yeah. know what I mean? Or or Walmart or wherever you shop. Like, yeah, there's a little bit too much toyness to their titles. Yeah. And one one big problem that I have, too, is that when you do change it, it what for me, it waters down the legacy, because if you have to tell me which lineage this is following, like I, that just doesn't work for me, man. Like if you have to tell me, well, this is the title that Hogan held and we're running this, le you know, well, that's this a question I have for you, Snead and both of you guys, like Tom and Jonah, like, so they, they just, we have the undisputed universal title, which is pictured here on the, the overlay. If you're watching the YouTube version of this, they've combined the universal title, which Joni, you said is about three, four years old. Right. And then, and they've taken the WWE title, which was the title that goes back to Hogan, Sheik, all of those guys. What happens to that lineage? Are they just combining those two lineages into like, if we're looking at the tree, the, right. the, you know, the family tree of the title, yeah, are two branches ver converging into one? Like, are we absorbing the history of the WWE title into the universal title lineage? Like, and this is all hardcore fan shit. Casual fans could care less. <laughs> like but you gotta, but you gotta take it into account. Cause that's, I mean, for us hardcore fans, like those are things that matter to us. Like if we're watching a match and like the illegal tag guy gets the pin, we're like, what are you talking about? Like right, right. follow the rules. It's like little things like that, that irk me the most as as a fan and yeah i want to know like who what am i looking at because you always hear like like for instance a casual fan will say like rick flair is a 16-time world champion but they won't know that more than half of those weren't even in wwe right right yeah. right so i want to know those things yeah because i i don't like that a lineage of albeit three or four years and and on top of that albeit not the most impressive i mean goldberg was you know what is he like a two-time universal like it's a weird lineage but i still want it to exist you know and, and even, you know with, that even with flair i think like technically if you really drill down i think he's like an 18 or 19 time oh, champion, yeah. Is it? yeah they were very selective yeah, yeah so yeah. it's like you gotta yeah you gotta take all those things you can't like you're like you're saying you can't erase history like i also don't want them to rewrite it on us you know like Brock right. is I, I, you know, my guy's brock i think he was like a four-time universal champion or something like that or what, what, i don't know it's right. WWE. They're never going to mention it again, and they expect us all to forget. Unless we have to have short-term memories. You're right. Yeah, we have to have extremely short-term memories. And my last like, point that I'm going to hear right now um, is something, and I can't remember if you or Ace said it on Wrestling Tonight. Um, the Lombardi Trophy never had to change. The Stanley, <laughs> Cup. Stanley Cup never had to change. Why do we have to change these titles? I mean, it would be, could you imagine if Roger Goodell walked out one day and was like, okay, we've updated the Vince Lombardi trophy or, you know, the Stanley cup president GM, whatever says, ah, we're going to, we're going to change up the Stanley cup this year. People would lose their minds only in the world of pro wrestling. Can they do that? And fans will just kind of accept it and go along with it. Just like the name changes. I mean, Everyone yeah. was up in arms, me included, when they changed Walter to Gunther. And now it's like yeah. Walter, he's Gunther now. You know, everyone yeah. just moves on. Mox, Dean Ambrose to Moxley. You know, it's the Ron same thing. Breaker, what was that? Like, right. It's, right. Uh, yeah. We all just forget about it and, and move on. And they, they know that, too. That's why yep. they'll do literally anything. It's like eventually everyone will forget Butch. I mean. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's the evolving there's not as much of an emphasis on the history and tradition. Although WWE does honor their history a lot. There's not as much of an emphasis on it when you compare it to real sports, because I think they're more focused on 
the current fans of today, once you hit a certain age, you're and you're the old school fan that grew up on eighties or attitude era, you kind of become, they just assume you're a, you're the hardcore that's going to be there where case in point kids growing up right now, this world title is going to be the title that they associate with this company. Yeah. They don't know about the winged Eagle. They don't care about the winged Eagle. It's us that grew up on it that are harping on it. So it's always, but, but I feel like with other sports, the Lombardi trophy does hold importance. The Stanley right. cup, like it's almost like your dad sets you down and, and you, you learn the tradition of this. And, and with wrestling, it's not so much like that. It's always like every generation has their own thing. They have their own champions. They have their own titles. They have their own entrance themes, all of that. Uh, you know, it, when, it shapes when with you each see, generation. And when you see the, the classic photos of Jordan with the NBA trophy, you know, in the locker room and then, or Wayne Gretzky holding the Stanley cup. Like those are iconic moments and you can associate that and just to see. And kids grow up wanting to hold that title themselves. Like I want to hold the Lombardi trophy, you know? Yeah. They're just like oh, yeah. bring him back the intercontinental title. But see, the, the real reason WWE does it is so that they could get all these jabronis coming to shows to buy new titles to carry them. Carry them. <laughs> That too. <laughs> I can't. I, I absolutely, man. That is one thing that just bugs the shit out of me. When fans take titles, is to see, like, I, it, and I hate it. <laughs> like line see. their necks and shoulders with it. Like yeah, yeah, I mean, we're, my all, mind. we're all marks, but like it's crazy to see the lens. Like I don't know. I like I've walked, you know, like a week straight to do, do like a WrestleMania or something. I would never want to walk with a belt. They weigh like no. 10 pounds. Like, Dude, those things like, are heavy. Three of like, them. Like, I'm not yeah. hating replicas either. Like I would love to have a replica on my wall, but I'm not carrying that bastard to a show. And you'll like, see no. people that have one around their waist and two on their shoulder. It's like, dude, you're <laughs> carrying thirty fucking pounds with you. <laughs> For like what reason? Why? Right. Photo right. ops? I don't even know. Like you're going to a place you're going to sit down in the darkness for three hours anyway. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. And, and where do you put them when you sit down? Right. I have trouble. On your, on your I path. hate going to the merch stand before the show starts because I have this bag of merch with me. I can't imagine having three title belts and my merch. I have trouble finding a place to put my Coke. <laughs> you know, like, if there's not an up holder, like I'm knocking that shit everywhere. Like I can't imagine holding three belts. Like, yeah. Right. Three hundred dollar replica belt, and you have to hope somebody doesn't spill soda on it. it makes right. How much did you say, right. Tom? How much did you say? Three hundred. I, you know, I think it's even more. Like, I, I think remember when I was now. Out, well, the I AEW one, five, six. Eight. eight or nine for the AEW one if you buy it at the merch stand. Yeah. That Phenom belt or Fiend belt? Was it the Fiend belt that went Fiend to like 6,000 or something? Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. That's insane. I think that's the one that was like personally designed by Savini, Tom Savini. Yeah. 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 Which still $6,000. Like, yeah. <laughs> It's like, who are wrestling fans, man? Are like they only coming from Greenwich, Connecticut? Like, who has this kind of money? I always, I think wrestling fans are like the sneakiest rich people in the world sometimes. I, like, I do too. They, yeah. They've got crazy money. And I feel like the money comes first. It's like, I've inherited a r ridiculous amount of wealth. What stupid thing could I spend it on? And wrestling just comes through the door. Like, we have endless stupid things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To buy. I'm in a I'm in a Facebook group that's uh that's ran by a guy that makes belts for AEW. Like he designs their titles. That's and, cool. And he, some of the things he has for sale in there, like he'll post them, and it'll be like, you know, a Reggie Parks Intercontinental Title. It's fifteen thousand dollars, and people are like bidding oh, on it. I'm like, I'd like to have that. Like, <laughs> I mean, I I'm like all that. for collecting wrestling stuff too. I just don't like getting like ripped off and like you feel like sometimes you're getting like in what, a lot of those Facebook groups. I'm looking. I'm like, is it really like is CM Punk's autograph worth three hundred bucks? I don't know. Who knows, right? Like, right, right. Signed eight by ten. But I'm weird like, about that. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I trust. It. Like, I've never really bought an autograph unless I was there to have the wrestler sign it. And also, it's worth it because yeah. then you meet them too. You know, so it's yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, if I got an autograph, it's because I met them and got the autograph. Right. I, yeah. I don't I autograph. The autograph's about the experience for me, not actually one hundred percent. Which is what? Oh my gosh! Like, I know we're almost done with this topic, but a quick tangent. I went to meet um, Undertaker like two years ago, or some something like that. It was like one of the coolest things that he just randomly showed up at this event in Queens. I think somebody else canceled, and they were like, "Oh, we have the Undertaker instead. Way better." But yeah. he was there, and WWE's new uh, what are they called? Like, 
um, oh, what, are, what is their name? Huh? Fitterman. Fitterman, yeah. They're like not a nice organization. I don't think so. Like they made that experience feel horrible meeting the Undertaker. Fitterman's all about the money for their pocket. It's Fitterman's not about the fans. Yeah, I, I hate to make them. I remember going to events when I was like a kid at Access and it was so much fun. Like you you had like a maybe 30 seconds, a minute with these people. You could actually shake yeah. their hand, whatever. Undertaker, and albeit it was coming off of COVID, but still like nobody it, it was far enough off, I think, that like this didn't need to happen this way. They were like, All right, you can like give him a head nod and we'll take your stuff. And <laughs> yeah. he'll yeah. it, like twenty feet away. It was horrible. The, yeah. the way they do tier pricing for autographs where it's you can it's you know, a hundred dollars for an eight by ten, or if you want their signature on a belt, it's two hundred dollars. Like, yeah, what yeah. is that? What? Well, that's so new. A signature, just, signature for me, man. A signature, and, signature. And yeah. it's all in how you do it too, because just to juxtapose that experience, we went to Double or Nothing twenty twenty. When no twenty twenty one, it was it was the first fan fest live event. Yeah, like yeah, Five thousand yeah. people after pandemic. It was the first one with that many people. And they had they did a fan fest. They had the little plastic things up at the signing booths, but yeah. no one cared, man. There were wrestlers walking around everywhere. We met like Ricky That's Starks, cool. just just mingling with the crowd. No one cared. It was a very very laid back, cool experience. That's the way it should be. That's like way long ago. I went to an, an Impact Wrestling event when they actually still had like yeah. the OG Impact roster. You ever go to one of those? Those are the best. Like they're. They're lined up before the sh like thirty minutes before the show. They line everyone up: Abyss, AJ Styles, James Storm, like around the seating, and you can yeah. just go into like a row and say what's up to them for like that's five awesome five minutes and go just go. It's the coolest. Yeah, it was very laid back. Uh, yeah, I miss those days. I really the bigger a getting... sport gets, the more inaccessible their athletes get. Now, don't let Fitterman know. Very about. true. Yeah, <laughs> don't let Fitterman and know. Yeah. Free, free things happen. Let him know. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> they'll hop on it. It's a, yeah. Did you see the Sasha Banks thing? Do you remember oh, that yeah. when, when yep. Naomi yeah. and her made a fan stand? <laughs> I was so like, weird. I was so insulted. I would never post that picture. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, guys, you ready to move on to yeah. our next topic? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, yeah. sweet. Next topic of the evening. Does Seth defending the title frequently diminish its importance? Now, Jonah, this is your topic. I'll defer to you to go first on this one. All right. So this topic, this popped my mind, I feel, beforehand uh, when I told you because I just saw a video on, on Instagram of Braun Raker challenging Rollins for this belt. And I don't know if they're going to go through with that or not. you got to believe they probably will or else it wouldn't have been put up there. I think it's interesting, like, I was a big fan of the open challenge. Uh, that was for a mid card title, but still I enjoyed him. You know, then again, it was John Cena giving a shot to people like Sami Zayn and Neville and all these people back then. So that was awesome. Uh, I don't think it diminished the importance there. I think we're used to seeing, but this is the world title. So we're used to seeing people like Lesnar and Reigns hold it on top and defend it maybe once every two pay-per-views. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle on this myself, if it diminishes it or not. I think that if this title wants to, I think it all depends how they want this title to be portrayed. So if this is going to be the workhorse title, like Seth keeps saying, I'm happy that they're doing it um, because it's a real, it's a contrast from their other world title. It'll actually make a difference for once uh, rather than just saying something, you know, like the brand split and then it just kind of like fizzling out. They, they brand it a lot, but it doesn't actually happen. If Seth truly does defend this, like he's defending it at house shows, I think he defended it like three times since he's won it already. So if he continues to keep that up, I don't think it's going to diminish the importance. Uh, I think that it's going to be a breath of fresh air and I would enjoy it on the line. And I, I would enjoy having a world title on the line at every pay-per-view again because I miss that. Um, but it all depends on how they want the belt to be or trade i'd say what do you guys think i mean i love this question i was thinking about it and it made me think of how much i actually love that roman doesn't defend it often because it feels like when he does it's a bigger moment now i feel like they've elevated that title to mean more while if this is going to be the workhorse title isn't that what the intercontinental title has been for years and what triple h has built it back up to and the same thing with the united states title 
Like it's this is supposed to be a raw title, and now we have Braun Breaker and NXT challenging for it. So everything they've already said about this belt has gone out the window. Like it started instantly as soon as they had qualifying matches on SmackDown for a raw title. Like I, I this title for the idea of this title means nothing to me, but what they've done with it makes it mean even less. Like I hate this title. I hope <laughs> it doesn't stick around. I ho- I actually hope Roman decides he wants this title and takes it away and combines all three of them because it's just garbage. It makes no <laughs> sense. It just makes no sense to me. I, I just don't get it. I really don't. That's what the Intercontinental titles for. They did well, such a good but, but to building. say that yeah, I just to jump in. I feel like it's different though when it's a world title. That's just my like. I think Intercontinental is great as a workhorse belt, but, but to Roman have like a, world title. a just well to have two world titles like they want though to have one be a workhorse. I feel like the, saying the Intercontinental Championship, it's there, it's there, but you know, it's not the it's what not if, the so. What if event. Super Bowl? These, like, what if the NFL said, "Oh, let's have another game at the after the Super Bowl and have a another trophy for that." Does that make any well, the sense? NFL, the yeah, NFL the is big, so we don't have to talk about that. The <laughs> yeah. is real. I think, I think uh, Seth defending this title frequently does not diminish its importance at all because it was just created and it has no importance yet. I think, and that's not shitting on it. It's just him defending it regularly will give it importance to me. Like it needs you have two champions like this is a, there's a big stark difference between having one world champion and two world champions. The world we live in, in WWE, they have two champions for each of their shows. Yeah. So I have no problem with one of them being kind of that, uh, very novelty spectacle. You're not going to see Roman. It's the old school way of booking. You didn't see Hogan every week defending that belt. It, you had to pay money to see Hogan defend that belt. You had to buy a pay-per-view or go to a show. Like, So I like that they're using Roman like that. I don't have a problem when the title isn't on the line. Look at MJF in AEW. He never hardly defends that belt. It gives weight to that title. Yeah, It makes it – you have to lay down your money to watch him – him put that title on the line. The only difference is AEW has one world champion. WWE has two. So for Seth to come in and – say, Hey, the other world champion, he isn't here every week. I'm going to be a world champion that puts this title on the line. One, it's different. It's a, you're booking both of your champions in different ways, which is refreshing to me. I want, I want them booked differently Two, You're kind of putting the cheese out there where he's talking shit about Roman, where maybe one day down the line, (coughs) the workhorse champion who works all the time has an argument to go up against yeah. Roman and we combine all the titles, not to say they will do that. I don't think they will, but if you did some sort of big unification match, Seth, there's your story in I'm here right. every week defending the title. You're hardly ever here defending the title book it, you know? So I, I don't have a problem. I don't think it diminishes this title at all. No, for me, <clears throat> the importance of this title was diminished from its inception. So, and that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing. It's um, it it was made to be the workhorse title. It was made to be defended. And Chad, you said it, it, it doesn't have that yet. There's nothing. You're starting at the bottom with this title. And I think making the history right now, you're making the history. So I don't think that defending the title will diminish its importance. Actually, I think it's going to, it's going to elevate it because, and, and simply for the fact that, when you have, because if he's going to be the fighting champion, I mean, Seth Rollins is going to be on the road all the time. If he's going to be the fighting champion, then you're going to have heavyweight title matches at house shows, which is awesome for and the I, fans. And and when you, and that's going to help sell tickets because if you advertise that there's going to be a world heavyweight championship match at a, at a house show, you know, cause I remember back when, when we were kids going and watching Ric Flair defend against sting at a house show, right. You know, and, and every once in a while, there'd be a title change. There would be a title change at a house show. Just to you let just you know that know. shit happens sometimes at house shows. And I like that. I like shaking it up like that. And I like that. That's a possibility. Like if I go and pay $15 for a non-televised event, I could see some shit happen. I like that. So I don't think it, def- it diminishes 
the importance of it with him defending it all the time. I'll say this. I, I hated the All-Atlantic title when they first debuted that in AEW, and it's become the best title in AEW. I love what Orange Cassidy has done with this, so just keep booking it and win me over. And you know what? You know what's making Orange Cassidy one of the more interesting stories in AEW is because he's defending that title like every other week. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like he's in 23 matches in a <laughs> row. Like uh, that, if they consistently do that, Seth beat AJ, Seth beat who Damian Priest. Yeah. Now he's got Braun Breaker possibly. If they keep running guys through. And it doesn't have to be these big programs. I like the open challenge aspect of it. Like, yeah, one it'll done. gain yeah. steam, dude. It'll gain steam. It will become a thing in that company if they just keep doing it. But I think, I think what this title needs is a long reigning champion who defends it a lot. And then this title will, it'll be similar to the AW international title where people will be like, damn, this is the title to watch. I think it'll be the title to watch, and I think that this is going to be the title that build, builds the next big star. And I think going off um, what you said, Tom, like the that it diminished it because of the uh, you know qualifying match on SmackDown. I agree. Like I don't like the fact, speaking of titles in general, that is it still that the women's SmackDown champions on Raw and Raw is on SmackDown. I believe so. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's just that's confusing for me, and you know, as we said, we're we're hardcore fans, so the lore does bother us, and that does bother me. I wish they could switch that, but then again, it would be too predictable that as soon as they draft them, they lose the belts as well. Like, and I don't like the swap. Please don't do the swap. No, like, use each of them no. a meaningless reign that led to what Charlotte is now. <laughs> like, um, but all of that aside, like it's hypocritical to say after that. But I do like the fact that Braun Breaker is stepping up. It's something. Yeah, that's fun. Different. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. And like sometimes, you know, even though they just had the draft and usually things remain a little bit more rigid until inevitably it, you know, goes into nothingness like usual and everyone's on everyone's show. But I like it. It's fun. I hope that he remains at an open challenge to any brand. I really do. And I think like I think you said a great point. It doesn't have any history yet, so it can only go up from here. It'd be hard for it to go down, yeah. I think, from him. Yeah, defending I mean, it, it started like the history, the what it was known for when they made it. I mean, on, on the IWC, all the fans are like, this is the, the, the participation trophy championship. You yeah. can't, you can't beat Roman. <laughs> yeah. Literally. That's it. You know though. what I mean? Like yeah, I can't beat Roman. So you got cool though. Yeah. It's cool. They gave it to the one guy who Roman didn't really beat though. I will say, cause Rollins yeah, yeah, is yeah, the yeah, only yeah. one Rollins is the only one that could probably go against that argument and say, okay, fine. But he didn't beat me either. Well, that's where you got to give that. That's where you have to give booking in WWE a little bit of credit because that, to me, is everything. All roads seem to point towards Roman and Cody at some point for a title yeah. chance, right? Like that's that's what we all think, but we know how wrestling is. Cody's already got hurt once. I think putting this strap on Rollins is kind of your break in case of emergency situation like you're you're putting him there where if god forbid cody rhodes something would happen where that storyline becomes something they can't tap you have the guy who romans never beat with the other world title that's that's in your back pocket that's kind of yeah. like a something to fall back on if the cody thing blows up and we don't get to get to that you know yeah right that's a great point yeah and i could see like not maybe not so much anymore because Triple H supposedly is more at the reins. But I do remember hearing that if somebody got injured, they were immediately deemed. You know, somebody in the big picture, they were deemed unreliable, and yep. things were changed. And so, yeah, I could see it. And maybe it's a test right now with Brock too. Like Brock, one of the most dangerous people to go against. I mean, he's one of the safest, but you know, who knows? Probably roughest guys to go up against in that regard. And they're um, booking Cody. They're booking Cody like an, a nineteen eighties baby face. I wish. I really wish that we could have a debate on that match that they had. The the most recent, the second one, Brock and Cody too. Because I personally, as someone who's a huge Brock fan and love what they're doing with Cody, did not love that match. I didn't love it. Uh, I think it was it was like super Cody, you know. It was just a it, little too dude, much. Dude, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. That that was like it took me out of it. You you mean to tell me a one armed man right? got 
got that much offense in on the beast. Are you yeah. kidding me? Like that's why I, him. exactly. He that's why I say he's being booked like Hulk Hogan, where he's unstoppable right now. Like right. So, so, real. Let's, so let's just move move into our final topic because you know it plays I, into I think it. it definitely plays yeah. into it. We're already talking about it. So let's go ahead and ask our final question yeah, and continue what we're talking about here. All right, final topic. Does it does holding Cody back from defeating Roman hurt or help his development in WWE? Man, I I, I feel like it kind of hurt him by not beating Roman, but I'm all here. I'm contradicting myself because I'm here for the thousand day reign. Like I think that's <laughs> cool, but like it kind of made no sense. Cody was that guy. That that would have been such a moment at Mania. I, I kind of feel like it derailed Cody. I really do. Um, but again. He's still got more story to tell. He's got to work his way back up. And who knows? Maybe at Mania, it turns out being Cody is the world champion and he winds up fighting Roman to win all the belts. So I don't know. I I, I think it kind of hurt him a little more than it helped him, but still plenty of story to be told. When it first happened, me and Snead were watching it. We were 99.9% .9 sure Cody was going to beat Roman Reigns. Oh, I think we yeah. all are. And... When Roman, if you'd asked me when it started, I was a hundred percent sure. Oh yeah, I was too. <laughs> if you'd asked me was, before that match, I was like, "There's no way, not a chance." No, we were talking me shit. Group chats. We were talking shit. We were like, "Oh, this is Cody's," but I was pissed, man. At first, when it first happened, I was pissed. I was like, "They screwed up." And then the next day, it started setting in on me, and I started thinking about it. I'm like, "No, this is good. This is good." Now, being what are we two, three months removed from Mania? Yeah, two and a half months. I'm starting to lean just seeing where the booking is right now. Just seeing where they're at with Roman and where they're at with Cody. It could change again for me, but right now I'm back on kind of thinking they screwed up because I think the Brock Cody program would be so much more elevated if the world title was in that picture. And the Roman storyline right now with the dissension of the bloodline that story would be fascinating without the title. It does not need the title. It would elevate that story even more if the dissension was coming about because the title was lost and the crack started forming. I think both of their storylines right now would be much better off if that title, <clears throat> the, the title match would have happened the opposite way. But having said all that, like you said, Tom, story's not over. There's a long road. By the time WrestleMania 40 rolls around, who knows? They could have got us back to a point where we're, we're pulling for Cody. But the, the momentum was so hot going into WrestleMania 39 that I wonder if they can get it back to that peak. Yeah. Like, I'm that, th they'll get it back to the point where people, you know, we'll be excited for Mania. Everyone always is. But I just wonder if it'll be that hot, you know? And here's the problem for I, me. I just yeah. feel like Cody's in a holding pattern and like, how can we book him, but keep him where he is? Like we don't, we can't advance him too much. Oh, let's break his arm and have him, you know, pass out to Brock this time. Like, it's like, how do we extend this? And it feels like they're searching for ways to do that with him now. Whereas mm -hmm. if he was champion, they wouldn't have to do that. They could just keep the momentum going. Right. I'll, uh, I'll say off of that, Chad, like it's uh, when you said, will will it get to that point? I don't think so. I, th I saw so many like being there also live, which was cool for me to see such thing that that evoked so much emotion from the like, I don't think I've ever seen such an emotional moment live before. <laughs> like people were like destroying the seats and just just pissed like it was yeah. just yeah. and it was visceral. And sometimes they have things and, and the argument of the like the WWE faithful, like the very, very faithful that, you know, are one sided tunnel type of fans are like, hey, I mean, you might not like the way it was booked. It, it's causing emotion. It's like, yeah, but no, that's still not good. Like, like the Finn, the demon Aller falling from an exploding turnbuckle, or whatever, in that Reigns <laughs> match, that evoked emotion, but it wasn't, it was, wasn't good still. Uh, right. This, I think this was clever for like two nights. I think the first one, it was after all of the anger went away. I realized, okay, fine, kind of like you were saying, this is a, a clever decision to not have him win it immediately. And then the next night when Paul Heyman was like, you can have a partner. like That that reminded me of like booking of 
years ago when they actually yeah. think about what they were saying. They were like, you can have a partner, but he could, he never, whatever it is, like, can never defend. And Brock's like, hey, I already have that. So I'm coming out. And I was like, that is cool. The heel turn was cool. And then after that, I think they, they didn't have much else to, to work off. But I don't think they really, maybe they didn't know they wanted to go all the way to SummerSlam. If they did, it's crazy they started it then because this is going to lose steam i feel it's and losing I, steam for me it's yeah. Steam it already yeah <clears throat> and it's just not and i also saw you can never believe these but like you saw the brock lesnar schedule the proposed one i guess for raw and he's on raw like three more times until their third fight i think so i mean that's not you know too reassuring <laughs> i think right. he comes back like after money in the bank uh you know just all those things combined i mean i guess what is summer some only about what two months away so I think I mean it's going to be a big money match either way, but also like what Tom was saying, I think uh, it's more of like a holding pattern, and it might be like a, a test, you know. And that doesn't really, as a fan, as like a as a somewhat educated fan, to see what they're kind of doing with Cody, that doesn't give me confidence. That's not doesn't make me go like, yeah, Cody. It makes me go right. yeah, like, you know, you should just throw him. I think you should have gone at Roman. I I would have loved. Lo- what I wanted to happen, what I really thought was going to happen was him have a rematch that Monday night on Raw and win it then. And it would have been weird and like, you know, he should have just won that Mania at that point. But I, I just, I think it would have been a great swerve and a really cool Raw after Mania moment too. Probably the best one ever. Right. I don't really know what they're doing right now. So, yeah, I'd say it hurts him a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I know they always say, what's to say, the comeback's better than the setback. Um but for me, man, like I, I'm torn. I don't know where I am on this because I was so bought in. I, and I honestly believe that the plan was to have him beat Roman at Mania. Um, and I think with the sell of the company, I think something changed. They can say it all they want that it didn't, but I believe that it did. I think it changed their plan. Um, they're going to have to do a lot to make me care that much again. And then do I want to care that much again about it? Because when we do get to it, you know, the predictability, and I know we say predictability sometimes a good thing, but with this, I don't know if it is because we've already used that up, right? You've already we've used already that predictability been, up on the first run. We've been here before. Now, if now, if they go into a second rematch at Mania, you know, there is no way he's losing. Like, there was just and if that he does, little bit the first time. And if he does, though, if he does lose the second time, then, then man. Then, uh, that's the, bad. Then that's, that's absolutely. <laughs> you that's put just, yourself in a very, very, point. yeah, you put yourself in a very, very bad situation, I think. It, I really do. And, I, and I'm, I'm with you 100%, man. This bloodline story absolutely does not need the title. It doesn't right. at all. Not at, at this I point. I mean, it's proving thousand. that. Yeah, without the tag outs, you know, it's proving that to me. Yep, I think it was a thousand day reign that really hurt. But who gives a shit? I, I think. You know they, I, mean? I, I think. I bet you're never gonna get that moment back. You had little Brody Junior there at ringside. Him, like it was such a moment. You can't recapture what you had that night. It's no, crazy. yeah, it's the thousand day thing. It, it, it's. I've heard. I, I, you know, you, who knows what? The, they, they're reclaiming their history. They're wanting to reset. Yeah, I was just about life. to say it's what you it's what you said earlier. Yeah, it's it's them wanting to modernize. That's like yeah. you hear yeah. Michael Cole saying the names every week. It's like he's gonna pass Pedro Morales. He's gonna pass you know naming yep. all these older. And then eventually, when Reigns pass them, they don't matter. But they won't really anymore. Like Reigns will matter for the next 20, 30 years. You know. Well, Gunther's so about to. Yeah, Gunther's about to break Honky Tonk Man's IC title reign. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Bianca, did she set the record for the women's title reign? I think like she did. Yeah. 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 They're the Usos broke the record for the tag title, so they're like updating all of their records, all of their title records, which. It is what it is. I mean, that's you have to do that. You don't yeah. want a bunch of teenagers like. <laughs> Like not who's Pedro Morales, Dad. Like, <laughs> like, that, that's what it is. How the hell was Pedro Morales a champion in WWE over one day? That's my question. I don't know, Tom. You were around those days. Let us know. I saw the tell. He <laughs> wasn't WWF champion when I was watching. So. You were what th- twenty five when he was champ. <laughs> I think uh, I don't know, man. I think uh, I think it's. It hurts Cody right now for me as a fan, but 
I got to, there is something, I, I just wonder if they can pull it off, but there is something about beating that underdog down, beating him and beating yeah. him and beating him and beating him. And then when he finally gets that moment, it's incredible. I just, to right. me, I thought we were already to that point. And so did I. Yeah. You can only beat a guy so much and keep him down for so long before fans start to just kind of like buy him as the guy who's getting beat down instead yeah. of like this potential underdog hero. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. Does anybody have any final thoughts before we move to our round Robin? Yeah. Surprise round Robin. Surprise round Robin. Yeah. I love that. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Mm. Memories of the iron shake. So everybody, Everybody go around, just give your, your one little memory of the Iron Sheik. No, nothing long, just quick and out. Is, can, it, can, it be a, can it be a personal memory? Does it have yeah. to? Because I'm a oh, loser. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see him live. Yeah, yeah, I got one. I got one. I'll say I, the, his feud with Sergeant Slaughter, the boot camp match at Madison Square Garden, man, that's when I was first falling in love with Wrestle, and that helped captivate me. And, and booing a guy who was – like from Iran like that, like a, a guy couldn't do that character today and live probably. And, and it was just, I don't know. It'd always be special to, to say I was there and watched that live and, you know, and boo this guy and just to see what he is. And also guys, I just heard uh, Colonel Mustafa also passed away today. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. No way. Okay. So it, it, my memory is, is a very personal, it's a personal memory. Um, Locally here we had, and it was probably the first time I watched. I don't know if you could even call it an indie show. It was a just a wrestling show that they held at our local ballpark, Wapow Park, um, and they had uh, King Kong Bundy was there, um, and Iron Sheik was there, and it was the first time. You know, I didn't know who these wrestlers wrestlers were, but my dad did, um, and and he, I remember him telling me about these wrestlers and I and I bought an eight by ten of King Kong Bundy, the eight by ten of him standing on Hogan. Yeah. Um and then I had Iron Cheek sign just a piece of notebook paper that night. And that was kind of the first time that I started really looking at, you know, what the you know, who these who's the who's these other people in the wrestling world that's not in the big time now but were. So it was a yeah, that was a fun event, man. Yeah, I'll say uh, my memory is similar. It was, uh, I think, 2011. I went to like a, it wasn't Legends of the Ring because they have those a lot now, but it was by another name. But they had an autograph signing with guys like Magnum TA was there, Brutus was there, uh, who uh, a lot of uh, Japanese wrestlers as well on Blake now, but Sergeant Slaughter and Iron Sheik were right next to each other. Oh, funny enough, King Kong Kerry was there, not King Kong. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> got chipped on that one. But yeah. Cheek and Slaughter were together, uh, and like, how old was I into that? Like, 13, 12 year old me was like, Oh, you know, this is so cool. Like, I know about them because they were still talked about a lot then on WWE. So, I was like, I know who they are, I know, but I don't know the history. But much like you, Sneed, they got me to look into it more. And it's funny that actually ended that all your signing, that portion ended with them getting the cops called on them, and I don't know why. But Sheik got thrown out of the signing. <laughs> so, <laughs> still raising hell with Slaughter, uh, even at some random rec center in Rowley, New Jersey. So that was a very fun, a very fun one for sure. For That's awesome. Piece, definitely. Uh, my, I have three little ones. Um, of course, there's the classic Howard Stern interview of him oh, tell, yeah. telling uh, Howard he's going to fuck Hogan in his ass. I, I love that. that. That was a great late night thing. <laughs> She Sheiky baby in his old age was a wild man, and I loved him for it. Card, man. Um, one of my earliest memories being a kid was being at my cousin's house, and I was very, very young. I was probably three years old, and he had the the Iron Sheik and the Jesse Ventura LJNs, and they were beat all to hell. But I, I was like, who is this guy? But I didn't grow up on the Iron Sheik of the eighties. I grew up on. Colonel Mustafa, Triangle of Terror, when when the Iraqi sympathizer bastard Sergeant Slaughter took on Hogan and he had General Adnan and Colonel Mustafa, a.k.a. Iron Sheik. And that's that's kind of what I remember because I loved that program. That was one of my low-key favorite feuds was 
Slaughter burning the flag and, and Shiki was always there. So legend, man. He, he's a yeah. true legend of the 80s. I've heard stories that when Hogan took the title off of the Iron Sheik, it's one of the biggest moments in 80s pro wrestling. So you got to love it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. That Rest boot camp match yeah. still holds up today. Like a lot of times you go back and watch stuff and it doesn't hold up. But you go back and watch that boot camp match and it's like watching a no rules, no disqualification match today. There's so much blood. It was awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Rest in peace. Sheik. Yeah, peek behind the curtain. This actually happened today. So yeah, yeah. You know, as we're recording, this happened just a few hours ago. So rest um, in peace. Iron Sheik. Yeah. All right. Well, Jonah, it's been great having you back on. Let everybody know where they can find you. Just go to rewind, recap, relive on YouTube or R3 Jonah on Twitter. Find all of my stuff. Some awesome interviews. We're on number 61. There's so many great names on there. I think I'm going to start reaching out to some of the past guests to see what they're up to now. A lot of the rising stars I had on a long time ago are now. Some are signed at Sky Blues and AEW. Yeah. Um, yeah. A couple others are, yeah, they're actually doing things. So that's really cool. The show's been around this long to see the progress and, and all the progression and some of the advice actually hopefully land home and help some people out, which is the whole point of the show. So definitely check those interviews out. Um, Cafe de Renee, I do that once a week. You can catch me on there. Uh, and other than that, yeah, just thank you guys for so much for having on. This was a very good debate. I think every time I learn a thing or two about wrestling that I didn't know. We love so having you on, man. We love having you on. So much fun. Thank you so much, all you guys. Definitely, man. All right, guys, that is going to wrap us up for this edition of the Turnbuckle Debate. Make sure you guys are going to the turnbuckletavern.com for all of your tavern needs. Tom. It's your time, bud. Get your shit in. <laughs> Big night, 7 p.m. every Tuesday. Mike Belcaster and myself don't miss it. You can click it on Twitter and Instagram. He's got that down there, T boy. He does. It's his shit. Yep. Right. Court is dismissed.